I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. Today I've got some really, really fun things to show you. We are going to talk about designing your own um, hem treatment on crop pants and take a look at this outfit here. I've got a um, hem on here that is done with a quilting design. Now, how did I get inspired um, for this? Well, I'll tell you, I've been looking through catalogs lately and everything I see has crop pants with some type of embellishment on it. So I thought, oh, what could I do? What could I make the most of my machine? And what could I do that would really be fun? Well, we're working with a fabric that's, you know, pant weight, but it's a kind of a full pant pattern. So we wanted something a little bit, a little bit lightweight, a little bit soft. So I thought, bingo, quilting designs, that will be Perfect. We'll talk about some other options too, but let me show you the pattern. We'll talk just, to, um, just for a minute about the pattern. Now, I never leave um, well enough alone. When it comes to patterns, I'm always tweaking them. I like to customize the length. I like to customize the width. So I did tweak this pattern just a little bit, narrowed the legs just a little bit, and then I shortened them. But I also cut off a area at the bottom and then added seam allowance. So that's how I created the band. So I've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance for my hem and I need to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the top of this band. I would also add a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the bottom of the pant leg. So that's how I customized it. That makes it ready and good to go when we're going over to embroidery. So let me um, show you the, uh, the hoop full of fabric here. What I've done is I've stabilized this with water soluble. I could use two different types. One is a sticky back and I could stick that on, but we wanna firm that up and we wanna beef up that fabric for the embroidery process. So I'll show you how I designed that. What I would wanna do is I would wanna measure my band and I wanna create a block of fabric that is uh, a little bit larger, a little bit wider and a little bit longer so that I'm gonna be able to uh, cut that out and sew it together and have that you know, completely cover the area for my band. So I'm gonna start out with a shape. I'm gonna go in here and I know I want to start with a, um, a rectangle, so I'm gonna choose that square. I want just a fill here. I don't want any outline or anything extra around it. And I'm gonna now resize this, okay? So I'm just gonna make this like a, a size of a, a narrow cuff. I'm gonna go about three inches wide. Let's get right down to about three, close to that, close enough. And I'm gonna add just a little bit um, to that length there so that I can fit this in a five by seven hoop. Now, depending on your band, you're gonna wanna use whatever, whatever will, will fit that area for you. Now, this is where the fun part comes. I'm gonna go here to this menu and I'm gonna select from what, again, are normally the quilting patterns. And you can see if I scroll through this, I've got lots and lots and lots of choices. I chose the leaves. I wanted to kind of mimic the look on the top, which we'll talk a little bit more in a minute, but um, it's a kind of a random pattern, so it's gonna match up really, really nice. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna select a different color. We're gonna do blue today. I'm gonna say okay. And now it's time to turn that area into the stitches. So I'm gonna touch this little bucket key, and then when I touch right on the area, I have now got that filled with my leaves. I'm gonna click next. I wanna do one more thing here, because remember I told you these are quilting designs. Well, quilting designs normally stitch out with more than one stitch going around at one time so that it builds up on there. Well, I've got an option here now to change the thickness and basically do a thinner um, stitch on there. So I wanna do that. I wanna keep this lightweight and I wanna keep it soft. I'm gonna go ahead. Yep, I'm ready to go to the embroidery screen. And there we go. I am ready to embroider this. Let's take a little preview there, a little close up. You could see how beautiful those stitches are. All right, I'm gonna lower the presser foot and we'll get that started stitching. So we'll let you see just a, um, a little bit of this take shape and you could see how it's just gonna completely go around. It's gonna trace that whole area and create those beautiful leaves. I would of course do um, two sets for each leg. I want a front band and a back band and this is gonna take about three minutes to stitch. So we'll let that do its thing. We'll go back over to the um, table so I can talk a little bit more. All right, so we've got here, again, we started with the stabilized fabric and you wanna make sure that you have an, enough body here to support those stitches. So remember to add that stabilizer. 
This is completely a wash away stabilizer. When I'm done, I want this to be very, very soft, very lightweight, and maintain the drape of what I need for a garment, okay? So you can see my two uh, finished panels here. I'm gonna show you how, to, how that's all sewn together here before we, we finish up today, but that would then complete one leg, one set for one leg. Think about where you could use this. You could use this on cuffs, you could use it on waistbands, you could use it on yokes, you could use it in all kinds of areas. Now, what about other designs? It doesn't mean you have to use a quilting design, but there are quilting designs available. There are also lightweight embroidery designs that would be very, very suitable for this. If you don't want to create a continuous piece, then you could create in, in sections small designs, little flower designs. There's all kinds of different ways that you could come up with a combination that's gonna work for you depending on the tools that are in, in your toolbox. All right, so now you saw this beautiful top. All right, that's what really makes the outfit. What I wanted to do was tie the color scheme together. And you know, in my world, in sewing garments, that is one of the beautiful things about being a garment maker, is your ability to customize. When you look at this outfit, I think you're gonna agree with me, it looks like it came from a boutique. And that's really a, um, you know, a compliment to the way that we can sew and the way that we can design whatever we want, however we want it. So I really selected this fabric first and I knew I wanted to make something out of it. I saw those beautiful leaves. This is a rayon batik, very, very soft. And I thought, whoa, wouldn't it be nice to tie that color scheme in? So that's the color that I used for my fill stitches and then that's also the color that I used for my trim. So again, this is just a, um, a simple tank. It's just got um, binding, it's got uh, a dart, nice fit. I, I you know, hit on a good one here when I found that pattern and had everything all wrapped up into one. Nice clean fit for the pants. They've got um, elastic around from the side and the back, but a flat front. So really a nice, nice cool look, great look for summer. So let's talk about the, the trim. When you want to, um, again, tie the scheme together, I had to think, oh, how could I incorporate that uh, blouse fabric or top fabric into what I was creating for the hem design. So I decided to create a bias binding for the hemline. If you look at the hemline there, it's just a little narrow bias binding. And then I decided to, again, use bias trim to cover the raw edges of the, uh, the band itself. So let me walk you through the steps here and show you exactly what I did here. All right, you saw my two band pieces are stitched. You saw that the, um, you know, I left a seam allowance on the side so that I could join my side seams. I left a seam um, at the top and you could either leave a half inch or a quarter inch. I, I left a quarter inch on that. On this one, I left a half inch, but whatever works for you. Leave only a quarter of an inch at the bottom and trim those pieces so that they're ready now to put right sides together sew at the side seams, and then you gotta imagine with me that this is the rest of the leg of my pair of pants. Now, look what I did here. I joined this wrong sides together. Again, method of my madness, I had a plan here. I did that so that on the inside, let's flip this around, I would have a nice clean finish and a nice smooth seam on the inside of my pants. I don't have to worry about raveling. Of course, I'd finish my seam allowances here. And then what I did is I simply used that bias strip to cover, I trimmed my seam allowance down here, and then I cut these, uh, I believe, an inch and a half wide, and literally just laid that on, you know, of course, switched my machine over to sewing and used my free arm to guide that around and just top stitch that really, really close to the edge. Now when it's time to trim the bottom, I've got that same, same bias. This time I'm gonna sew right sides together. I'm gonna sew that quarter of an inch. So watch here how, how it would work. I'm gonna flip that then to the inside, turn under that raw edge, and I've got a completely nicely finished hem. So let's go and take this hoop off the machine and see how this turned out. There you go, I've got a very simple pattern here and I've got um, all that stabilizer now has to be taken away. So I'm gonna take this out of the hoop 
And it's very important with water soluble to get rid of as much excess as possible. Grab my scissors here. Okay, and you always want to trim this really, really close. Naturally, be careful that you don't cut your fabric because what all this water soluble is, is a, a, you know, a temporary helper for hooping so that my fabric fits nice and tight and firm in the hoop. But now I'm done with it, I gotta get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? This is again, water soluble. How do you, how, how do you soak that away? You use very, very warm water. So think about that even at the beginning um, when you're selecting your fabrics, that you're gonna have fabric that is um, easily, easily washed. But I wouldn't want to have all this excess that I've got trimmed here ending up in the, you know, in the, in the area where I have to wash it away because it's just as easy to cut it and throw it away. Now, when I take this into hot water, this is gonna completely dissolve whether you use the sticky backed one or you use the, um, just the regular uh, cutaway one. They'll both come off very easily. Soak that in hot water. It's gonna completely disappear and you're gonna be left with a beautiful, nice, soft, lightweight piece. So I think you'll agree, this is a really eye-catching outfit. It's easy to make a top and a pair of pants that completely coordinate be sure to visit the website. We've got complete instructions, so we'll show you how to do your own custom crop pants and make a beautiful outfit.